I find myself in a situation that I used to only see in YouTube videos about infidelity. I used to watch these videos for entertainment, never imagining that I'd be in a similar spot myself. It all began when I received an unusual envelope in the mail. What caught my attention was the absence of a return address, and it had two stamps in the upper right corner. The handwritten address made me think it might be from an old military buddy trying to reconnect. When I opened it, the letter was addressed to Mr. Mr. Unknown, which I'm using to replace my name. Here's what the letter said. Dear Mr. Unknown, I'm sending you this anonymous letter to let you know that your wife has been having an affair with Mr. Bossman, who is involved with multiple women. I read the letter multiple times. The author wanted to remain anonymous and wanted me to know that my wife was having an affair with her supervisor. The mention of multiple women likely meant that the supervisor was involved with more than one woman. I had seen her supervisor once when I dropped my wife off at work. He was a tall guy, around 6, 4 inches or 6, 5, bald, below average in looks, and out of shape, resembling a heavier golem. I knew my wife's type, and he didn't fit it. To give some context, during my time in the military, I focused on endurance training. But about six months before leaving, I decided to start lifting weights because I was tired of feeling fatigued during workouts. I gained 20 pounds of muscle. It may sound conceited, but my physical appearance improved significantly. However, at 5'9", I didn't consider myself a Don Juan. Nonetheless, with my new physique, I noticed a substantial increase in attention from women. They would check me out discreetly, and one of my wife's friends even subtly showed interest once. My wife, who was the jealous type, never seemed to notice any of this. As a religious person, I never took advantage of these opportunities or flaunted them to boost my ego. I didn't flirt or have affairs. It was just a confidence boost. My wife's only comment was, if your neck disappears, you need to stop, which was a bit underwhelming but made me believe she loved me for who I was, not just my body. Returning to the letter, I took it with a grain of salt since there was no concrete evidence. Confronting my wife wouldn't help because if she denied it, what else could I do? I lacked evidence, and if there truly was an affair, confronting her without proof would drive it underground. Suspicion alone wasn't enough, as voicing my suspicions would make her think I didn't trust her. What if I was mistaken? Having solid evidence was crucial. Let me provide some background about us. I'm 35 years old, and my wife is 33. We met in college and got married shortly after. I also enlisted in the military, and during our time together, we had three kids, a nine-year-old boy and two girls aged seven and five. My wife was a stay-at-home mom, taking care of our three children. I'm confident that she remained faithful throughout my military service. We had a great group of friends who supported her when I was deployed. Contrary to the stereotype of cheating spouses during deployments, it's challenging to keep such things hidden, although it does happen. To cut a long story short, I was rarely at home during my last posting, and as I continued to advance in rank, it was only going to get worse. So, I decided to leave the military. After serving for 10 years, I made the choice to leave. Typically, this is a pivotal moment in a military career because it doesn't make financial sense to leave after this point. Military orders are typically at least three years, and retirement occurs after 20 years. I made this decision to start over in the corporate world from the bottom up, primarily to be a more present father for my children as I hadn't spent much time with them before and had never changed a diaper. Regarding my decision to leave the military, my wife wasn't thrilled about it at all. In short, she doesn't handle uncertainty well and felt comfortable in the life we had built together in the military, despite her complaints about my frequent absences. Now that I'm no longer in the military, she presented me with a long list of demands regarding where we should live, how much money I needed to earn, and other factors to make her feel comfortable and ensure security for her and our kids. She cried a lot during this period. As everyone knows, you have to go where the job opportunities are, but I did my best to meet her criteria, and we were incredibly fortunate in the civilian world. I fulfilled all her requirements. I secured a job in the right state, within driving distance of my parents, who she loves. I'm earning what military personnel would consider a significant income in the six figures. We're in an area with excellent public schools and low homeowner association fees, where everyone is polite. Oh, and did I mention that she had always complained about not being able to start her career? Because we move so frequently in the military, which is true. 
she expressed her desire to utilize her degree in logistics and supply chain management. She began her job search, and within three months, she landed her dream job, if you can call it that. She works at a distribution center where all her colleagues are women, and they report to a male supervisor, the bald man I mentioned earlier. While her job doesn't pay much, it's the job she always wanted and her first since graduating from college. I supported her 100% in pursuing this opportunity, as I do for everything she chooses to do, which she has since acknowledged. Since I received this letter, I've been trying to collect evidence to confirm its authenticity. If the person wanted to expose her boss, why didn't they report it to HR? Why tell me instead? Nonetheless, I kept a close eye on my wife. I knew her cell phone password, so I checked her messages, and I did find texts with her boss, but their conversations were pretty ordinary, and they didn't text much. That letter bothered me for almost a week, and I couldn't find any proof of my wife being unfaithful. She's been at her job for five months now, and the only noticeable change is that our intimacy has decreased. She's been turning down Zex for the past two months, but I can't accuse her of cheating just because she's not in the mood. She always has excuses like her job becoming more stressful or her feeling tired. Despite searching for evidence for two weeks, I came up empty-handed, but I remained vigilant for any hints. I often wondered about the sender of that letter and considered it might be a prank. At one point, I almost mentioned it to my wife as a joke, but I decided against it. I was about to close that strange chapter and accept that our intimacy wouldn't be as frequent as before. However, one night, my wife talked about her job and mentioned how her female co-workers were jealous of the attention she was getting from her boss. She said they envied her because she had received the best quarterly reviews and been recognized as the employee of the month three times already, despite her relatively short time there. She was genuinely excited about the recognition, and initially, I was happy for her since she hadn't experienced a real job before. But that letter kept coming back to my mind. For some reason, her statement sparked my curiosity. I wondered, could it be that one of her co-workers is so jealous that they sent me that letter? And more importantly, why were they so envious of her recognition? While it's common for women to be jealous of each other, this seemed a bit extreme. I became suspicious again and considered hiring a private investigator to track my wife. However, I changed my mind at the last minute because I didn't want to waste money in case I was wrong. After all, I didn't have any strong evidence or a valid reason to be suspicious. There were no incriminating text messages, just that mysterious letter, her reduced interest in intimacy, and her newfound enthusiasm for her job. It all seemed pretty normal, right? So, I decided to purchase a GPS tracker online to install in her car and monitor any unusual places she might go. The GPS tracker I bought was the type that easily fits into the OBDI port beneath the steering column. I was nervous because it's quite visible, but my wife isn't very tech-savvy. I figured I could easily come up with an excuse if she happened to notice it, especially since I often handle car maintenance. I could just tell her it's related to a fuse or something, and she'd believe me. I wouldn't really recommend this kind of GPS tracker for any covert operation, like the one I was about to undertake. It was a Friday, and I was eager to see what the GPS would reveal. At lunchtime, I noticed her car was parked in an unfamiliar location. It wasn't her workplace, the grocery store, or our kids' school. It was on the other side of town, a place we rarely visited. I decided to Google the location and discovered it was a hotel. I immediately requested permission from my boss to leave work and headed towards the GPS location, which was about 35 miles away from my job. When I was about 25 miles into the drive, with only 10 miles left to reach the location, I noticed the GPS signal was moving away from that spot. I was tracking the signal using an app on my phone. I sped up, but I could see the GPS signal heading back towards her workplace. Her car had been at that location for around two, three hours, and I had just missed her. I felt so disappointed. I got out of my car and looked around the area, trying to figure out if her car was parked at a Best Western hotel or the nearby restaurant. Another thought crossed my mind. Maybe she was out eating with her co-workers because the restaurant and hotel were next to each other. But it seemed strange for her to travel this far just for a restaurant when there were plenty of options between her workplace and that location. It's not like she was a big fan of Golden Corral, 
willing to drive 27 miles for a meal. That day, I returned home with numerous questions but no answers. My wife noticed that something was bothering me when I got home, but I lied and told her I had a tough day at work. I made an effort not to confront her, but I still felt like I lacked sufficient evidence to do so. Consequently, I decided it was time to hire a private investigator because I couldn't keep checking my phone and leaving work to track her down and catch her cheating. On Saturday, I spoke with a private investigator who charged $1.25 an hour. He wasn't a licensed investigator, but rather a person with a good camera phone whom I found on Craigslist. I agreed to pay him to follow my wife during her lunch hours. His services weren't too expensive since he only worked during those hours. The private investigator also installed a GPS tracking app on his phone, allowing him to see what I could see. I informed him about the incident involving the Best Western and Golden Corral and showed him the location. Monday through Thursday passed without any noteworthy events. Everything was routine. Then on Friday, the private investigator alerted me to some movement. He texted me that my wife was driving toward the location of the Best Western and he was tailing her. I opened the app to confirm his report. Since he knew her destination, he went ahead of her and arrived there before her. When my wife got there, she went alone into the hotel. The private investigator took photos of her entering the hotel and followed her inside. He was also aware of her boss, as I had described him, so he knew what he looked like and the car he drove. The private investigator sat in the hotel lobby and discreetly recorded my wife entering the elevator. He managed to join her in the elevator, which was a risky move as it could have blown his cover if she had seen him multiple times and recognized him. I suppose you get what you pay for. The private investigator noticed that she got off the elevator on the third floor and recorded everything. He didn't follow her out of the elevator on the third floor, but returned to the lobby and waited. About three hours later, he saw her boss exit the elevator, go to the front desk, check out of the hotel, and head to his car. He recorded the entire sequence. Ten minutes later, my wife emerged from the elevator, went directly to her car, and the private investigator captured this on tape as well. My suspicions were confirmed. She was cheating on me with that bald guy. I now had all the evidence I needed to confront her. The private investigator sent me all the recordings and pictures to my Dropbox. I compiled them into one video and came home early before she did, with my laptop and the envelope I mentioned earlier in my post. If you were to inquire about my feelings at that moment, I would say I felt surprisingly calm because I had been mentally preparing myself for this exact situation. When she returned home, I summoned her to the kitchen. My laptop was on the countertop, where I had compiled the recordings into a 30-minute video that showcased her arrival at the hotel, exiting the elevator, and her boss emerging shortly after, followed by her. I presented the video to her, and within less than two minutes of watching, she fully comprehended its content. She turned to me with an apologetic expression and uttered, I can explain. Tears welled up in her eyes as she repeated, I'm sorry. I silenced her and pointed at the screen, urging her to keep watching. Despite her attempts to turn around and explain herself, even attempting to get me to stop the video, my anger grew, and I grabbed her by the back of her hair, forcing her to face the laptop. I pointed at the screen, and harshly told her to keep watching, you know what you did, as she cried softly and continued to watch. I held her hair throughout the entire video, and she continued to sob and tremble. I could tell from the fear in her eyes that she was terrified of me, as she had never seen me this furious before. I must clarify that I am not a violent person, and I had never laid a hand on her or any other woman in such a manner before. However, I made an exception on that particular day, after we finished watching the video, I forcefully pushed her to the floor, causing her to fly across the room. I had a strong urge to physically harm her, and I yelled at her, accusing her of sleeping with her boss just five months into her new job, and who knows how many others. She responded through tears, claiming it was the only time she had cheated. I asked her how long it had been going on, and she confessed that it had been two months. She stated that she didn't care about him. The sexual encounter meant nothing to her, and she couldn't explain why she had done it. I yelled at her, demanding that she start talking, or I would resort to violence. She confessed to everything, admitting that she wasn't genuinely attracted to him, but because other women were interested in him, she wanted him too, 
almost like it was a competition. I believe it had to do with him being the male boss in a predominantly female workplace. According to her, he was involved with other women as well. I couldn't comprehend how my once beautiful wife was involved with this guy who resembled Gollum. She was doing so merely because other women were interested in or already involved with him. It seemed like she had forgotten that she was married while engaging with this guy and denying her husband intimacy. What kind of world were we living in? It appeared that she was with him more out of competition than anything else. I was extremely upset, and words couldn't express it. I felt like my previously pristine image of my wife had been tarnished. That night, I called her derogatory names and told her I didn't want to see her again. I kicked her out of the house because I couldn't stand the sight of her, and she went to stay with a friend. That night was incredibly stressful because I had to feed and put my kids to bed, and I didn't know where anything was in the house. I was running around like a headless chicken, trying to resist calling my wife because my five-year-old was crying. My wife had always been the stay-at-home mom and more involved in my kids' lives than I was. I was the breadwinner, and she was the homemaker. I thought we made a great team until now. She had destroyed everything because she was trying to compete with other women, disregarding the fact that she was married. She displayed very immature behavior. According to her, the female employees working under this guy, Gollum, were throwing themselves at him, even those who were married. It was a competition among grown women, married women, which was baffling to me. Grown women were acting like college girls, and I suspected that one of these women might have sent me that letter. Why would grown women compete to be involved with an unattractive, troll-like man? This guy disgusted me, taking advantage of his female employees and turning their workplace into a disgraceful mess. I want to get a divorce, and I want her to suffer the consequences of this betrayal. However, I had relied on her to maintain our home, so it would undoubtedly take some adjustment. My unfaithful wife has been texting and calling me since yesterday, seeking permission to return home. I didn't get much sleep last night, and I have to go to work this morning. She knows where everything our kids need, including their medication, is kept. My seven-year-old daughter requires special attention due to allergies and being selective about things, which my wife is good at handling. My five-year-old daughter can also be challenging to take care of. I dropped my kids off at school and left work early to pick them up. It wasn't as bad as I expected, but I was quite tired. During this time, I haven't been responding to my wife's texts or calls. That evening, I called her back and told her to come home. When she arrived that night, it surprised me because she came with her older sister, perhaps out of fear of being alone with me. Her sister lives 90 miles away from us. My wife must have confided in her about her infidelity and sought her support. My sister-in-law married young, is now divorced and bears a striking resemblance to my wife. They could be mistaken for twins, but she's two years older, and we've always gotten along well. She's more knowledgeable and respectful compared to my wife. My sister-in-law and I have had a good relationship for as long as we've known each other. My wife is the spoiled one in the family, and her older sister often has to clean up her messes. While I wasn't in the mood for reconciliation or playing nice with my wife, I was glad to see a friendly face. Even though I thought my sister-in-law would always be behind her sister, family bonds are strong. I appreciated her coming to mediate for my wayward wife, as she could relate to what I was going through due to her own experience with her husband's infidelity, which led to their divorce. My sister-in-law took me aside and explained that she wasn't there for my wayward wife, but for the sake of the kids. She acknowledged that my wife could be immature and suggested that, for the children's well-being, I should allow my wife back into the house. We could try an in-house separation and see how things develop from there. After our conversation, I have to admit that my sister-in-law has a way with words because she managed to calm me down enough to tolerate my wayward wife's presence. I glanced at my wife, who was sitting in the corner with a red face and swollen eyelids, as if she had been crying for days, trying to avoid making eye contact with me. It gave me some satisfaction that she understood the impact of her betrayal on me. When my kids emerged from their room and welcomed her, it eased the tense atmosphere and warmed my heart. I truly wish she hadn't betrayed me and had remained faithful. Seeing her with my kids was something I cherished because she was an excellent mother, but not so great as a wife. We lived in a three-bedroom apartment 
so my wayward wife and her sister shared the guest bedroom, while the kids stayed in the third bedroom. My wayward wife came out of the bedroom after putting my kids to bed and began cooking dinner, while I sat on the living room couch with my sister-in-law, watching TV. As my sister-in-law started talking to me, I could sense her intention. She was trying to divert my attention from my wife's affair or make everything seem normal. Deep down, I wanted things to return to normal, to go back to the way they used to be. I was tired of being angry and exhausted, taking care of the kids alone and handling my job without my wayward wife. I needed a distraction, and her sister was quite chatty. While my wayward wife was in the kitchen, my sister-in-law mentioned that she would leave the next morning but would stay longer if needed. I told her that I was likely going to get a divorce because I couldn't look at my wife the same way or trust her anymore. My sister-in-law understood and didn't try to persuade me otherwise. After my wife finished cooking dinner, she served both of us without making eye contact or saying a word. The next morning, my sister-in-law departed and we continued with our daily routine. I still wasn't speaking to my wayward wife and she didn't seem to be getting ready for work that day, but I didn't inquire about it. In the afternoon, I consulted a divorce lawyer to explore my options. The lawyer mentioned that based on my wife's income, I might have to pay alimony and child support. It seemed absurd because she was only earning $45,000 a year, and she had cheated with her boss. Cheating with a superior, especially when in a committed relationship, is never acceptable. Perhaps her newfound financial independence, as it was her first job since college, had played a role in her actions. However, she had clearly taken it too far. I didn't have an issue with providing alimony and child support, as I had essentially done that during my military service when I earned less. It wasn't about the money, it was a matter of principle. If she could cheat on me with her first career boss, what would stop her from doing the same with another person in authority in the future? When I returned home that night, I spoke to my wife for the first time since D-Day. She had written a letter that she wanted to read to me. She explained that she wanted to express her thoughts without getting emotional. As she read the letter, all she said was how sorry she was. She carefully avoided mentioning the Gollum guy and simply apologized for betraying my trust and behaving immaturely. She expressed her desire for us to stay together and her willingness to do anything to repair our marriage. Surprisingly, she also mentioned something unexpected. She said I could sleep with other women if I wanted to. This revelation caught me off guard because my wife had always been the jealous type. I doubted her sincerity and told her that I didn't need her permission to be with other women because she had forfeited the right to have an opinion on that matter. I believed she was using this offer to manipulate me and alleviate her guilt if I acted on it. I interrupted her and clarified that I had no interest in being with other women, and if I were, I wouldn't have married her in the first place. This made her burst into tears, but I insisted that she hadn't explained why she had deceived me for two months. It wasn't a one-time mistake, it was premeditated and deliberate. She planned to go to the hotel and engage in a secret affair with this disgusting guy, risking a lot for what? I informed her that we were getting a divorce, and my mind was already made up. I added that despite her physical attractiveness, I couldn't stand sleeping with her or having her near me. She kept asking, why are you being so cruel to me? I had spoiled my wife, treated her like a princess throughout our relationship, never raised my voice, always pampered her, allowed her to make all the rules at home, and gave her control over our household. She had grown accustomed to it. I treated her well and never mistreated her. Perhaps that's why she ended up with the first guy who ordered her around, thinking I would continue being the same nice guy even after she had an affair with her boss. It's unbelievable, and there's more. She also informed me that she had quit her job because she couldn't bear being there and seeing her former boss's face. She said she had everything with me but managed to throw it all away because she thought she could fit in with her co-workers. She claimed she wasn't sure how it had escalated to sexual interaction. Despite my disgust at the thought of her boss, I couldn't shake the question of how a guy who looked like a golem could seduce a woman as attractive as my wife and make her forget her vows. I questioned her persistently, wanting to know why she had fallen for him. She struggled and stumbled over her words while attempting to answer my question. She admitted that she had been grappling with the same question herself, trying to understand how she had become involved with this guy and why she kept going back for more. 
She emphasized that it wasn't even because the Zex was enjoyable. She sarcastically remarked that it certainly wasn't about his looks. The only reason she could come up with was a combination of several factors. He was skilled with words and very articulate. He always seemed to have the right response at the right time, as if he had the answer to every question. His position of authority played a role because the fact that all the girls looked up to him and tried to impress him made him appear more attractive. While the reasons she provided seemed nuanced and well thought out, all I could think about was how much I would enjoy disrupting this Gollum guy's party over there. I informed my wayward wife that I intended to expose him. At this point, my wife expressed a willingness to do anything to make me happy, even if we were heading for divorce. She couldn't stand seeing me upset with her. I told her that I wanted to expose the Gollum to his spouse. I explained that, although she had been foolish to let this guy take advantage of her, he needed to be exposed, and it was time for me to seek revenge against him for destroying my family. My wife disclosed where he lived and his wife's name. I asked her how they had been communicating without using text messages, and she revealed that they had been using her work email messenger. I pressed my wayward wife to log into the work messenger and show me the messages. She hesitated and believed it wouldn't be a good idea because it would only further aggravate me. She also expressed fear that I might harm her if she showed me the messages. I continued to insist, but she insisted that since I had decided to proceed with the divorce, she would show me the messages when it was finalized and we were separated. A few days later, I managed to locate the Gollum's wife. By the way, the Gollum was 51 years old and his wife is 48. I conducted a background check on him to find out where he lived. He had four children, with the youngest being 12 years old. I made an additional copy of the video and saved it on a thumb drive. Then, I went to the Gollum's house when I knew he was still at work, probably involved with another one of his employees. I knocked on his door and his wife answered. I believe she was the only one home at the time. I explained my story to her and handed over the flash drive containing the evidence, along with the anonymous letter that had been sent to me. She revealed that she had received a similar letter and confronted her husband about it. However, he denied any wrongdoing and accused the women at work of being lazy and hating him because he insisted they do their jobs properly. He had convinced his wife that these women were trying to destroy his life, and she believed him. She had never considered hiring a private investigator or suspected anything was amiss. The Gollum's wife was very grateful for the information I provided, and I left her my contact information as well. She expressed her thanks for my service to the country, and we said our goodbyes. I'm not certain if they ultimately got a divorce or separated, but at least he now knows that I'm aware of his actions. Last week, I submitted all the evidence I had to the HR department. I spoke with a lady on the phone, and she invited me to come by in person. During my visit, I provided another flash drive containing evidence and a statement from my wayward wife, admitting her affair as the reason for her job resignation. I believe this should be sufficient to get him fired from his position. Before leaving the job site, I decided to pay the Gollum a visit. After exiting the front lobby where the HR office is situated, I went around the corner to the docks area where the 18-wheelers are unloaded. It wasn't a very secure location, and one of the side doors was unlocked allowing me to slip inside the building. Although I wasn't familiar with the layout, I knew the Gollum's name, so I asked an employee who directed me to his office. While walking through the warehouse, I noticed that the majority of the workers there were females, including the forklift drivers. It seemed like this company had a policy of hiring predominantly female employees. Although there were some male workers, they were few and far between. As I approached the direction of the Gollum's office, I saw him exiting one of the offices. I was about 50 feet away when I called him by his name. He turned toward me, trying to identify who I was. He may have assumed I was a truck driver there to drop off something. As I got closer and almost face to face with him, I didn't utter a word. Instead, I delivered a right hook, knocking him out cold with a single punch. Afterward, I calmly walked out of the warehouse. As I reached the exit door, I glanced back and saw a small crowd forming around him as he was starting to regain consciousness. I then opened the door and exited the building. Yesterday, shortly after returning from work, I heard a knock on my door. When I opened it, I found two police officers standing there. 
they had come to question me regarding the assault that occurred at my wife's former workplace. They suspected that I might be involved in the assault on Gollum, but they lacked concrete evidence. From the way they framed their questions, it was clear that I was a suspect. Although I was captured on a security camera, the description wasn't very clear, possibly because I was wearing a hat. In a nutshell, Gollum had identified me as a suspect and wanted to press charges. I informed the police that I was not responsible, and they asked if I had an alibi. I confirmed that I was at home with my wife, and they requested to speak with her. I agreed, called her, and she lied to cover for me. She didn't know about the assault beforehand, but quickly caught on and supported my false alibi. I'm not certain if the police were satisfied with our answers, but they took pictures of our cars, noted down my contact information, and mentioned they'd reach out if they had further questions. I messed up big time, and it's hard to believe that Gollum, who had an affair with my wife, had the audacity to call the cops on me for assaulting him. Fortunately, news spread quickly, and one of the women he had been involved with had the courage to file sexual aggression charges against him. This newfound bravery might have been influenced by the fact that he was being investigated by HR and that I had confronted him at his workplace. As part of their investigation, HR questioned most of the women and they disclosed the truth. It turns out he had been pressuring many of his female employees for sexual favors. Most of them had initially refused, and those who did comply claimed they did so out of fear or intimidation. It's a complex situation, similar to the Harvey Weinstein case, where some women were willing to engage with him to advance their careers. But once he faced legal trouble, they all portrayed themselves as victims. Nevertheless, I was pleased with the outcome. I heard that he was terminated from his job the following day. My wayward wife had kept in touch with some colleagues, so I'm not entirely sure if the story is accurate or not. A few days later, I reached out to his wife to check on her, and she informed me that they are currently separated. She explained that he no longer resides with them. She was the one who revealed to me that multiple women have filed sexual aggression cases against him. According to his wife, after confronting him with the evidence I provided, he confessed and admitted to having had sexual relations only with my wayward wife. However, it's difficult to believe his claim, especially considering that several women are pressing charges against him. This doesn't bring me any comfort. In fact, I would feel somewhat relieved if it turned out there were multiple women involved rather than just my wife. It's puzzling to me what she gained from this situation. I'm left questioning myself and my judgment for choosing her as my wife in the first place. If she was willing to engage in such behavior so easily, it raises concerns about her faithfulness during my military deployments. Writing this now, I feel utterly devastated and depressed. I've been reading numerous posts about surviving infidelity to find solace and assurance that I'm not alone in this. I also spoke with my brother on the phone, and he suggested seeking help from a therapist due to my current mental state. The VA covers various medical expenses, including visits to therapists, which wouldn't be a financial burden. Nevertheless, I'm hesitant and apprehensive about confiding in a stranger about my problems, even if they are a trained professional. Yet, here I am, sharing my story with a group of strangers online. It somehow feels therapeutic to share and receive advice from anonymous individuals, gaining different perspectives and reading comments and responses. I'm still living in the same house as my wayward wife, but we now occupy separate bedrooms. Her sister has been visiting more frequently, and things appear to be returning to a semblance of normalcy. My wayward wife has been making every effort to keep me happy. Despite this, we haven't been intimate since D-Day, and I have no desire to engage in intimacy with her. I've been procrastinating when it comes to pursuing a divorce, recognizing that the more time I waste, the more comfortable I become with her playing the role of wife and mother once again. Initially, I thought my wayward wife might be inviting her sister over to improve our relationship, since she knows I get along with her. However, it turns out my sister-in-law is considering moving closer to us on her own accord. With her kids nearly grown and her youngest about to enter college, she's looking to live closer to us. We have plenty of family nearby, including my parents, who are aware that our marriage is going through difficulties and that my wife had an affair, though they are unaware of the specifics. Despite her infidelity, my parents still hope we can work things out for the sake of the kids. A few weeks later, 
my sister-in-law secured a new job close to our area and moved here. My wife and I continue to reside under the same roof, but sleep in separate bedrooms. Essentially, we're roommates now, and I've consistently declined my wife's propositions for intimacy. While it's challenging to go without Zex for an extended period, my military experience taught me self-control. My sister-in-law has been visiting more frequently, and it seems she's more interested in spending time with me than with her sister or the kids. My wayward wife noticed this and addressed it with her. I learned about it later, as my sister-in-law started visiting less often without explaining why. My wayward wife tends to be jealous, so her reaction didn't surprise me. It may have been for the best, because I was beginning to develop feelings for my sister-in-law, despite having harbored a long-standing attraction to her. I never acted on those feelings due to my marriage to her younger sister. I was contemplating whether to reconcile with or divorce my unfaithful wife. However, I'm increasingly inclined towards the idea of divorce. Reconciliation seems challenging because I can't bring myself to trust her again. Trust is a fundamental element in any successful relationship, and I can't share a bed with someone I can't trust. She had a two-month affair and denied me intimacy during that time, which in my view is an unforgivable offense. My wife believes there's a chance for reconciliation, and I've noticed she's been putting in considerable effort to seduce me. She's taken to wearing seductive lace nightgowns around the house, often without underwear or a bra. I'm aware that she's trying to love bomb me and seduce me, and unfortunately, she knows my weakness as well. It worked, as we ended up having closeness in the kitchen that night. Here's how it unfolded. I was getting something from the refrigerator, perhaps a beer, and as I walked by, I noticed her with her back to me, resting on the kitchen counter while preparing fruits for our kids' school lunch. She was wearing a transparent lace robe with no panties or bra. I tried hard to resist, but I couldn't because she had been parading around the house in that attire earlier, and she had already gotten me aroused. So, as she leaned on the counter, her back to me, I approached her from behind. I put my hands on her hips, pulled her towards me, and then gently moved her into a standing doggy position. I lifted her lace robe, and that's when things escalated. It was probably the most passionate encounter we've ever had. It wasn't the slow, romantic lovemaking we were accustomed to, it was raw and passionate, purely driven by my pent-up desires. I noticed she reached climax more quickly, and her body responded more intensely than ever before. I'm not sure if it was my imagination, but her reaction was unlike anything I'd seen in our ten years together. During that time, we'd always had slow, tender zex, nothing aggressive or rough. We only stopped because she was getting too loud, and our kids were starting to hear her and were coming out of their rooms. I was still in a daze when the kids interrupted us, and I should have suggested we continue in the bedroom, but instead, I went to the bathroom to finish alone. Unfortunately, last night I had a quick sexual encounter with my unfaithful wife, and it revealed something new about her that I wasn't aware of. I discovered that she enjoys a bit of rough and aggressive intimacy. This revelation was surprising to me because I thought I knew everything about her. Before meeting her, I had limited experience with women, and I remained faithful to her throughout our marriage. It felt like I had married a stranger. In our usual marital intimacy, I let her take the lead, paying close attention to her desires. I've read books on how to please a woman, and most of them emphasize listening to her body's cues. Even the late Bernie Mac had a comedy skit about that. I felt like I had been engaging in conventional zex throughout our marriage, which might not have been what she truly desired. Last night, I took control and did what I wanted, disregarding her preferences, and surprisingly, she responded positively and reached climax faster. What troubled me the most was wondering what else I didn't know about my wife. I began to question myself, wondering if it was my fault that she cheated. Perhaps if I had been more assertive and rough in bed, she wouldn't have strayed with the first guy who took charge. Maybe that's what she craved, her fetish, and I failed to recognize it until now. I felt like all the marriage advice I had read was either inaccurate or didn't apply to her. Last night it seemed like her body responded to my dominant approach, and my self-focus, disconnected from her desires, led to her heightened response. Maybe she enjoys being controlled, wanted someone to give her commands. I had always been taught to be polite and gentle with my wife, likely reading the same books on intimacy that my priest did. I'm starting to think that her infidelity may have been due to my ignorance about certain aspects of her desires. 
I really wanted some guidance on this, but I have no one to turn to for such questions. Outwardly, I may appear as the strong, aggressive military guy, trained for combat, but when it came to my unfaithful wife, I turned into Mr. Soft and gentle, letting her take control of our household and even our finances. It's becoming clear to me that I relinquished my power in this marriage, both inside and outside the bedroom. Recognizing my shortcomings is crucial because if I don't, I risk repeating these mistakes in future relationships. Even though the impromptu, intimate encounter with my unfaithful wife was a mistake, it shed light on our relationship. I now believe that because I failed to assert myself both in public and private, my wayward wife took the opportunity to explore being controlled. I couldn't help but think that this might not have been her first experience of this kind. Some individuals on this platform suggested that I should undergo STD testing and consider paternity tests for my children, which is a sensible idea. My kids strongly resemble me, so I find it hard to believe they aren't mine. I used to be confident that my wife didn't cheat on me while I was in the military, but not anymore. These past few weeks have taught me that I don't know as much as I thought I did. I mean, if I hadn't received that letter about her infidelity, she might still be involved with Gollum to this day. I often wonder if his assertiveness played a role in her continued attraction to him. Yesterday, I took an STD test, received the results the same day, and fortunately, I tested negative. Additionally, I decided to go through with the paternity test, as many of you suggested. I collected saliva swabs from three of my children for this purpose, all without my wayward wife's knowledge. I'll receive the paternity test results in about four weeks. I'm not overly concerned about the paternity test results because I believe my kids are mine, and the timing of their conception aligns with when I was at home. During my time in the military, we lived in on-base housing provided for married service members. As for an update, there's not much to report at the moment. I'm still contemplating moving forward with the divorce. My lawyer has drafted the separation agreement, and it turns out that I will be required to pay her alimony. This won't be much different from our current arrangement, as I've been providing her with financial support since she was a stay-at-home mom. Currently, we're on speaking terms, but sleeping in separate bedrooms, essentially living as roommates. We haven't engaged in any intimate activities since our unexpected encounter on the kitchen counter. She's been making efforts to win me back, but I've been avoiding her, staying out late, hanging out with friends after work, and sometimes not even returning home. She calls my cell phone to check on my whereabouts, but I choose not to answer. She's noticed that I'm emotionally distant and feel that I've mentally checked out of the marriage. I should have initiated the divorce process weeks ago, but I'm hesitant due to my aversion to change. I'm also concerned about managing my demanding job while sharing custody of the children. When we do separate, I'll likely aim for a 70-30 custody arrangement in favor of spending more time with the kids. I adore my children and cherish every moment with them. They often prefer to spend more time with me than with my wayward wife because I tend to indulge them, buying them presents and being lenient while she takes on the role of disciplinarian. I occasionally hide the gifts I purchase for my kids to avoid my wayward wife's scrutiny, although she usually discovers them eventually. I am the primary breadwinner, and she has been the homemaker, and this arrangement has worked for me. The police haven't contacted me yet regarding the assault, and I hope it remains that way. I've heard that a civil case has been filed against Gollum, but I'm not sure if he's in jail or what happened to him. Apparently, before I intervened, None of these women thought it was a good idea to report him to the HR department for sexual aggression or a similar offense, maybe because they felt their voices wouldn't be heard. I suppose my actions of confronting and humiliating Gollum gave them the courage to stand up against him. Yesterday, I received the paternity test results, and they confirmed that all three kids are indeed mine. Thank goodness for that. It looks like I'll be proceeding with the divorce. As I mentioned earlier in this post, I have no qualms about financially supporting my wayward wife. I had informed her beforehand that I would be serving her with divorce papers and she cried, but she understands there's no turning back. Despite all the embarrassment and pain she caused me, I genuinely wish her well. I have no doubt that she will find someone else soon because she's still a very attractive woman. However, it's the end of the road for both of us. In our conversation before serving her, we discussed her future, and she mentioned getting a part-time teaching job to keep herself occupied. 
we agreed that I would continue to provide her with an allowance of $3,000 per month, including child support, so the money will be for her and my kids. I've heard that it might not be a wise idea to avoid the legal system, but I have reservations about having more government involvement in my paycheck. Finally, we completed the divorce agreement with both our lawyers present. It was an amicable divorce, and I hold no grudge against her. She clearly regrets her actions and took responsibility for them. I've forgiven her for the sake of my kids, but I'll never trust her or consider reconciling. I recently found a nice two-bedroom apartment in a good area of town. There are plenty of beautiful women around, and I never had the chance to date since my wife was the only woman I'd been with. It's not as easy as it seems to muster the courage to ask a girl out, because I've never really learned how to date, but I'm still an attractive guy, and women do check me out from time to time so I like my chances. One more thing, my sister-in-law has been visiting my apartment more often now that I'm no longer living with my wayward wife. It's clear that she's attracted to me, and we've been spending more time together. I don't know where this is headed, but I'm not interested in dating her, and I think she understands that. Nonetheless, we both enjoy each other's company.